Well guys, with the release of Disney's latest dolloping of Star Wars Mania in the form of Solo last month, I decided to take a look back at one of the franchise's smoothest and most charming of actors, Billy Dee Williams. He's the embodiment of charm, the personification of cool, and also <coughs> one of the only black faces in the entire galaxy. But Billy Dee gave Star Wars that distinctive cool legacy which we can only pray and hope hasn't been completely destroyed by recent efforts. This deal is getting worse all the time. And let's not forget his contribution to Tim Burton's Batman in the form of Harvey Dent. His slick and debonair approach to Gotham City's district attorney must be one of the greatest missed opportunities in the history of superhero cinema. If only we ever got to see him transform into the villainous Two-Face in Tim Burton's sequel instead of this. Start this party with a bag! <laughs> yep, Batman Forever is my favourite childhood film. Yes, I know. So, why pray tell am I mentioning all of this to you? Well, because in the early 90s he released this, Alien Intruder. Well, it looks like we're hitting the ground running with this cover. Just marvel at the level of detail they've put into this. It's almost like two semi-professional promotional stills have been photoshopped on top of what is obviously a crudely cut out still image of Billy D taken from a random scene in the film. Also, it takes a lot of cojones to rip off not just one, but two different fonts from rather, how should I put this, bigger budgeted franchises. Oh, and you know you're in trouble when they show highlights from the actors' careers on the back of the DVD case. Ooh, special features, scene selection. I think we're going to be just fine. Yep, they went all out on the titles, huh? Yeah, for the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here. The score kinda sounds like I'm playing an early Wing Commander game. <laughs> oh my god, not the best way to start movie, really isn't. Okay, so we've got some guys shooting at each other in a cheap warehouse, I mean, a um, really advanced spaceship hangar bay, yeah. Wow, just look at those special effects. Amazing. Oh, god damn it. Don't cut to your shitty spaceship model. It's terrible. Uh, sorry, hang about. What? You can clearly see in the shot that the laser blast is going straight past the actor in the center frame. So, where did the other laser bolt come from? Why would you spend what clearly little money you had for special effects on a shot that makes no logical sense? Oh, and by the way, if you're feeling slightly confused at this point, you're not alone. We're only 2 minutes and 28 seconds in. Yeah, there's no explanation as to what the hell's going on. And we've had two quick cuts to the scientist guy trying to access the ship's computer with some bizarre frame intercuts featuring Tracy Scoggins. <laughs> yeah, fire burn. <laughs> Oh god, stop cutting to that shot! <laughs> Sorry, um, did that corpse just scream out? It did, what the hell? What, was he just lying there silently while his back was on fire, hoping no one would notice? Great plan. And you got warm and dark. Red hot dark. Oh, where'd you learn to shoot, Doc? They ought to give you back the money. <laughs> Bugs Bunny is the ship's computer. Okay. Jesus, this guy's incompetent. Look, he literally moves his rifle out of the way so this guy can turn around. Luckily for him, the guy's too slow to even notice. So this guy, who we learn is named Borman, storms onto the bridge to kill the captain. And that's where our mysterious woman, Tracy Goggins, appears once again. Uh, uh, oh god, no, please. Please stop kissing. Oh, no tongues, please. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, all this sizzle and burn, it's making me hot. You feeling horny? Jesus Christ. So, for no apparent reason, Borman now realises that he's murdered the entire crew and begins to feel regret. Kinda makes you wanna hit the sack, doesn't it? Uh, no, no it doesn't. Oh, come on, sport, there's no need to be so melodramatic. Oh lord, who thought that shot was a good idea? Oh god damn it, don't cut to that shot. Jesus, we're only seven minutes into this film. Seven! Earth, 2022 AD, maximum security prison, New Alcatraz. Uh, sorry, what? This is set in 2022, as in four years from now. Okay, gotcha.
So, after that previous cinematic fiasco, we're now treated to a good old fashioned prison beating. It's good to know that the Trump presidency didn't cut prison budgets in the future. I mean, laser bars aren't cheap. Uh, yeah, again, no attempt at the story here, you know as much as me. During the fight, we see another prisoner who's attempting to escape. Jesus! The Republicans don't mess around! Aw oh, yeah, there's my boy! <laughs> Sorry. I just assumed prisons in the future would have more advanced on-off switches. That thing looks older than what we have now. Okay, so we're back to this guy again. Yeah, just a pro tip, layering shitty music over your scene doesn't mask the fact that you're using on-set audio. A real computer, Jack. He's as good as they get. What kind of time are you doing, DJ? Life. Somehow he managed to penetrate the military budget requisition computers inside Mount Thunder. How much does he have in his account? 20 million American. Hey, what can I say? It's what they wrote. Well, thank God for poorly installed man-sized ventilation shafts in a maximum security prison. Engineer first grade. Life, no parole. Drunk driving. Wiped out an entire family on the Autobahn outside Houston. A booze hell, huh? Oh yeah, sure. Because that's your reaction. Jesus, what's this roof made of? Napalm? Uh, pfft. yeah, why not? That's how you slide. Again with the explosions. In the future, does everyone have to tap each other while holding a gun? Demolitions expert. Flew an armored car, took out a pizza joint along with it. Five dead. You like to blow things, huh? Not as much as I like to fuck. <laughs> but you like to do that a lot. <laughs> well, what do you want? I got a dick with a will of iron. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Looking for a few good men. Yeah, that's no one in this room. At all. If you volunteer for this mission, you roll the dice. You hit your number, you're free men when we get back. And we roll snake eyes. You die a million miles away from home. Well, hell, ain't that like walking into a whorehouse with the lights out? What? I've wound up with a lot of dogs in those dark rooms. Um, focus? Anyone? There's one more thing. The Aphrodite program. What the hell are you talking about? He's talking about virtual reality. It's called The Weekend. You choose your woman, your fantasy. We choose the broads, huh? It's your weekend. USS Presley, class in salvage vehicle. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but I'd rather be watching Red Dwarf. Okay, so now that Billy D and his gang are on their way to find the missing space freighter, our gang of lovable, if convicted criminals begin their raunchy virtual weekend. Where are you going? I'm going. 1952. Yeah? Well, I'm going to the wild, wild west. I would pick Britain pre-Brexit. For the sake of brevity, I'll spare you the next 20 minutes of the film. All you need to know is that each member of the crew begins their virtual simulation and Tracy Scoggins appears in each one. We have a Wild West fantasy, a 30s film noir bar, a 50s American store, and a very poor attempt at Baywatch. fun in the 50s there, DJ? Oh, you ever ride a Harley before? I can't say that I have, but I can't say I just rode the shit out of a bathtub. Oh, God, no, no. After all of that, the gang go about their daily spaceship chores, but Navigator Mancuso discovers that the ship's coordinates have been changed, and they're now heading for G-Sector. What's G-Sector, you ask? Uh, I have no idea. It's never actually explained. Also, Billy Dee starts to exhibit some strange obsession with this highly overused shot of Tracy Scoggins. The chief engineer McClellan starts to hear music being played from his virtual fantasy on a disc and then starts to lash out at DJ. But before that scene could develop any further, a distress signal is heard. What gives? It's a distress signal. I kind of have to believe that Billy was just drinking before they shot this take and he refused to get rid of the bottle. Yep, great hyperspeed effect there. Put Star Wars to shame. 
Seven days and we hook that sucker up, turn around and tow her home. Welcome be free man. <laughs> A piece of cake. Space cake. Space cake, anyone? And before yet another scene can develop, the crew are forced to respond to yet another alarm. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm in this movie. The ship's coolant starts to leak, and then is fixed. Oh well, onwards to our destination I guess. Ugh. The crew decides to enter their VR cryopods again, despite the ship seemingly falling apart, while Billy D gets upset that he can no longer find Tracy Scoggins, but then spots her in the Wild West fantasy simulation. After a dull standoff with some VR Ed Harris's, Lloyd is saved by Tracy, but not before his love interest is killed off. As a token of thanks, Lloyd is asked to give her a back rub, but just as things start to heat up, Billy gets pissed that he loses the video feed. Meanwhile, in the 1940s Casablanca simulation, another love bot is killed, leaving the now singing Tracy Scoggins to blow McClellan a kiss. In the 1950s reality, Tracy sets fire to the local gasoline store, killing yet another virtual love interest. And in the poor man's Baywatch simulation, we see the final love interest just dead on the beach with her breasts exposed. Yep, at this point, they didn't even try. During all of this, Billy Dee realises that he hasn't been drinking for the last five minutes, but then witnesses Mancuso being forced to have sex with Scoggins. Yep, you just keep on drinking there, Billy. Right with you. Fortunately for Billy and the audience, the ship, once again, encounters trouble. <laughs> So the ship finally reaches the mysterious G Sector, but before anything interesting can happen, the gang discuss the virtual murders in their simulated fantasies. A bromance scuffle breaks out between Lloyd and Mancuso. <laughs> And after all that nonsense, the crew are once again ordered to report to the bridge. The ship finally tracks down the first ship from the film's opening. Oh boy, I bet there's a lot of vomit on that thing by now. The crew then dress up as Ghostbusters and board the vessel. The crew board the ship and begin to search for survivors. Meanwhile, on board the Holly, McClellan is, um, getting busy with Tracy Scoggins. How you may ask? I've no actual idea, it's never explained. Cup of coffee too much for you? You killed her. You know I live for caffeine. You killed her! God damn it, you killed her! Oh god, not this fighting shit again. <sighs> you need to try some decaf, Peter. Seriously? That's the end of the scene? Okay then. And for no apparent reason, the ship's android gets electrocuted from walking on a light panel on the floor. Oh, um, sorry for not mentioning him earlier. He's been in a few scenes, but believe me when I tell you that he does absolutely nothing in each scene he's in. He's a glorified prop. Hey, I heard a joke for you. How many New Yorkers does it take to change a light bulb? None! Fuck you! Hey guys! Meanwhile, on board the Holly, Tracy Scoggins makes the ship's computer do some typing. The crew has no luck hacking into the ship's mainframe, and Billy Dee becomes distraught that he can't find Tracy Scoggins on his computer. You guys never heard of downloaded video in 2022? Billy the Blue Power Ranger uncovers a virus in the ship's computer bank when they discover the virus is in the shape of Tracy Scoggins. Billy D reveals that he was originally on board yet another starship, the Joplin, that the Holly was sent to find. Teaming up with Tracy, they hold Mancuso and DJ hostage. Fortunately for them, it seems that the ship not only has man-sized ventilation shafts, but also wobbly walls. Lloyd breaks into the ship's armory, uh, sorry, I mean supply cupboard, and confronts Billy D. Billy D kills Lloyd, but not before he can arm the ship's self-destruct mechanism. Oh yeah, great design. Real handy that you set the ship to self-destruct thanks to a well-placed computer panel in a random corridor of the ship. Billy D then attacks Mancuso, and DJ for some reason stands on top of a perilous drop and unsurprisingly gets shot by Billy D. What were you hoping to accomplish there, exactly? McClellan then appears and is hypnotised by Scoggins, allowing Billy D to shoot him easily in the back. Mancuso destroys the ship's mainframe, thankfully not making Bugs Bunny sounds while it dies. Ariel, I mean Tracy Scoggins, licks Mancuso's ear, sending Billy D into a jealous rage. Mancuso shoots Billy D, who is then sent flying into a cheap wall panel. Mancuso then manages to get into the ship's escape pod and narrowly avoids the explosion. Three, two, goodbye. I 
However, Tracy Scoggins has managed to sneak on board. I know it's going to be a little cramped, handsome, but we'll make do. <laughs> and that's it. That was Alien Intruder. What was that film about? Seriously, this film is about nothing. We learn nothing. We know nothing about how Tracy Scoggins came into existence. The characters barely develop. There's no explanation for how each man suddenly falls for her and how she can drive them all to murder. They discover nothing once on board the other ship and the ending doesn't even attempt to have some kind of finality or coda. I can forgive the hilariously cheap production design, or the fact that the ship's android did absolutely nothing too, or the fact that Billy Dee was clearly bored out of his mind and just drinks in every scene, or the fact that Tracy Scoggins never has any kind of master plan or ulterior motive other than sexy murder. But the real sin of this film was how the evil sexy AI was already on board their ship! The crew were already becoming infatuated with Ariel before they even reached the ship they were supposed to rescue which means the problem is with whoever built the damn AI. The entire rescue mission is pointless, and once they get to the ship, all they discover is that they already had the same virus on board. And when characters die, there's next to no time for us to even care. The music just repeats the dull sound of synthesized horns throughout, the dialogue is nothing but dick and fart jokes for most of the time, and I don't even need to go into the crappy modeling shops of the ship. All in all, Alien Intruder is a completely forgettable mess. Sorry, Billy, I love you, but did you need a paycheck that much? <sighs> well, at least there's still Solo to enjoy. I mean, it's not like Disney could screw that up, right? Right? Guys?